Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Chris and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to install Kali Linux on a Raspberry Pi with Mac OS X. So let's just jump right in and get started. The first thing that we need to do is we need to download the Kali Linux image file. So let's open up a web browser and in the URL bar we're going to navigate to http colon forward slash forward slash cdimage.kali.org forward slash Kali TAC 1.0.5 and here we're going to click the download link that says Kali Linux 1.0.5 ARM EL RPI.image.xz now because the Kali Linux image file is just under two and a half gigabytes the download may take a little while to complete so just be patient and allow it time to finish what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video here and then I'll resume it when my download is complete. Okay, you can see that my download is complete. Now what we need to do is we need to download and install an application called Kika, which is a file archiver. And what it's going to do is it's going to allow us to uncompress the Kali Linux file that we just downloaded. So back in the URL bar of our web browser, we're going to navigate to http colon forward slash forward slash Kika, K-E-K-A, osx.com and here we're going to click the big green button that says download Kika 1.0.4 and the download may take a couple of minutes so again I'm going to pause the video here and then I'll resume it when my download is complete okay now that we finished downloading Kika we need to install it so let's open up the finder and then navigate to your downloads folder and you should have a Kika DMG file like I do. Let's go ahead and double click that file so we can mount the disk image and install it. And here we'll simply drag and drop the Kika icon into our applications folder. And once this is finished, feel free to eject the disk image and delete the Kika DMG file since we'll no longer need it. Let's go ahead and close that out. We can delete the Kika file. And we can also eject the Kika disk image. All right, now that we've deleted the excess Kika files, we can move back into the downloads folder. And you'll notice that the Kali Linux file we downloaded has a different icon now. That means that we can uncompress it with Kika. So let's just go ahead and double click that file to begin uncompressing it. And if you get this prompt, simply select open. And you'll notice that it's now extracting the image file. Now this process may take a little time because the uncompressed file is going to be slightly under seven and a half gigabytes in size. So again, I'm going to pause the video here and then I'll resume it when the extraction is finished. All right, you can see there that Kika has finished uncompressing the Kali Linux.xz file and I now have a Kali Linux.image file. This is the file that we'll be placing on our Raspberry Pi's SD card. Now we no longer have any use for the .xz file, so we could delete it, but I'd recommend waiting until after you've completed this tutorial and you've confirmed that it's working because if you encounter an error later on, you don't want to have to download that file again. So now moving on, it's time to install the Kali Linux image to our Raspberry Pi's SD card. So go ahead and connect your SD card to your Mac. And when you're done connecting your SD card, we need to open up the terminal app. So in the finder, we need to navigate to applications, and then we're going to open the utilities folder and then we'll open the terminal app and in the terminal we're going to type df and then press enter and this is going to list all of our file systems so what we need to do is we need to make note of our SD cards file systems name mine is listed at the bottom here and yours may share a similar format but if you're not sure which of these belongs to your SD card the best way to find out is to simply eject your SD card enter the DF command again and see which file system is no longer listed the missing file system is the one that belongs to your SD card so if you have to do this just make sure you reconnect your SD card to your computer before moving on okay so now that we've made note of that information we need to format our SD card so let's open up the disk utility app which is back in the utilities folder and there it is there let's go ahead and open it up and in the disk utility app we need to find our SD card in the left column and select it mine is right here and it has no name 
And in the right pane, we need to select the Erase menu. And here, we need to select the drop-down menu beside Format. And we're going to set the format to MS-DOS FAT. Mine is already set to that, so just ensure that yours is also. And there's no need to give it a new name because once we complete a few more steps here, it's going to revert back to whatever the factory name is. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and click the button that says Erase. And in the prompt, go ahead and click Erase to confirm. And now that it's finished formatting, we need to refer back to the left pane and select our SD card again. And at the top, we're going to click the button that says Unmount. And now it's time to install the Kali Linux image to our SD card. So we can go ahead and close out the disk utility. And then we need to move back into the terminal. And in the terminal, we're going to type CD space downloads with an uppercase D and press enter. And now we're going to type DD space if equal sign Kali tac Linux tac 1.0.5 TAC ARM EL TAC RPI dot IMG and then space of equal sign and then you're going to specify that file system name. However, the last two characters are going to be omitted. I'm going to go ahead and enter mine and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Mine is forward slash dev forward slash disk two. And then it also has two remaining characters, which are S1. I'm not going to enter those characters. You'll want to stop at the first numeric value. So once you've done that, press the space bar and type BS equals 512K. And now we're ready to finish this process. Go ahead and press enter. And this process may take about 10 minutes to complete, but it is the final step. So just be patient and allow it time to finish. And when it's done, all you'll need to do is disconnect your SD card from your computer and then connect it to your Raspberry Pi, power your Raspberry Pi on, and then log into Kali Linux the way you normally would. Which for those of you who have never used Kali Linux, the default username is root and the default password is tour, T-O-O-R. And then to launch the Kali Linux desktop environment, you'll use the command start X. So that's it. That's how you install Kali Linux on your Raspberry Pi. I hope you found this tutorial useful and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.